blackout or whatever actually oh, yeah, happened yeah, yeah, on our show. Yeah. That's yeah. actually what happened. So I wasn't sure what the problem was. All right, so let's, uh, all right, does that look okay? Sure. All right, great, and then you just talk to me. And remember, stay close to the mic, even though it's really awkward. And, um, but yeah, so that'll be, uh, that'll be great. Good. So thank you for coming uh, back. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, my pleasure. You know, oh, oh, that's... Does that move? Yeah, well... Or I can move this. Yeah. Let me yeah. move this. Yeah, that actually... Well. There we go. Some people just know it as a better way All right. Yeah, all right. You have an auto insurance... Oh, you don't need me. No, 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 that's... Hiring someone to move your piano. All right, are you in there? Yeah. Nah, close enough. All right. All right, that's good. I have a very interesting guest here for you. He has been on before. I was, uh, frankly, very impressed uh, with him. Didn't know anything about him, quite frankly. I didn't, even, I didn't even know how to pronounce his name because he's got this weird spelling of his last name. T-S-A-I? I've lived with oh, all hold my on life. Yeah. It'd be better if I actually turned on your microphone. Let's try that again. Yeah, that might help. Oh, it, oh, it helps a lot. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> this is brave new world stuff. Did I get the spelling right, T-S-A-I? Yeah, T-S-A-I. It's Except, something I've lived with my entire life. And I'm sorry about that because it's pronounced chai, and it's chai as in T as in T party. So I thought, okay, who is this guy? So I had him on. Very impressive. Overachiever. Just about anything this guy has ever done. And now he's running for Congress. And for the 6th Congressional District Republican nomination, uh, 6th Congressional District in Ohio, and a uh, pretty impressive guy. And so we got along very well. He is one of us, uh, shares our values. You know what I'm talking about. Now, full disclosure, he is also an advertiser. He wants to reach people in the upper Ohio Valley. He wants to let them know who he is and what he stands for. And you need to know that because all, I'm all about transparency, as is he. And then if you want to keep listening to this, which I hope you do, fine. And if you don't, fine. But you need to know everything right up front. So, Dr. Rick, Rick Chai, welcome back to Demi. I'm still butchering your name. What the hell's wrong with you? I Please don't know what's wrong me. with you, Dimitri. Maybe, okay. That might take another hour. Yeah, well. <laughs> so, uh, also, when Jeez, you disclose... man! Man! <laughs> we're new old friends. Okay, yeah. Actually, so, yeah, actually, in a way, we are. We actually yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, when you mentioned that I'm an advertiser here... Um, so everybody pushes, hey, you got to win Mahoning, you got to win Columbiana, you got to win Stark County. I think sometimes the, the southern part of my district is forgotten. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the reasons oh, I've yeah. advertised on this station. Yeah, yeah. Because, because I want you know. people to know that I'm going to be traveling up and down the state, not if, but when I win. And and you've been doing that. And I've yes. been seeing the, uh, yes. the blue signs. It's very interesting. He's a chiropractor, had one of the biggest chiropractic uh, practices in the nation, in uh, Beaver County, Pennsylvania, right across the border, Black Hawk Chiropractic, yes. is that right? Okay. Yes. And um, uh, your signs have a chiropractic theme. What is the slogan for those blue signs? So my uh, slogan is, let's fix spineless DC. And it's funny because DC is also doctor of chiropractic. Very good. But um, Very I did good. that because of the... Uh, well, we can talk about that in a bit. What we see in the nation today and all the things that are going wrong. Yeah, no question. But first, uh, a little bit about you. Tell our listeners about you and Tammy and your connection or her connection to Kennywood's uh, Potato Patch. All right. Well, I met my wife in when I was in college at Pitt. We met at the gym. Fast forward many, many years. Uh, East Palestine train derailment. Uh, I've known locally as the Creek Ranger because I would put military gear on and go into the creeks and uh, risk health and you know I, I spoke out against the epa the cdc norfolk southern when there are many people that are still sick in east palestine that are even afraid to speak out because they're free, afraid of uh, repercussions from these agencies so um i just thought it was the right thing to do i had a lot to risk but i thought that uh, protecting my hometown and my people was more important so uh, i came home one day and i was kind of downtrodden because people are like that now in east palestine a lot of them have lost hope. So you're kind of walking around in a depressed kind of zombie-like state. Yeah. My wife, well, we were able to also raise over $100,000, my wife and I, single-handedly. And we, it would have been more, but I shut that off about four months ago when I started my campaign. We are the only uh, charity that went directly to the residents. What did you do? The, 
Uh, well, what, what do you mean, what did I do? What was 100,000? What exactly, how did you parcel it out? So we parceled out by interviewing patients that were afflicted. We had a guy that uh, breathed in vinyl chloride. He was in a coma for five days. Oh uh, he now is on dialysis. These are the stories that you do not hear that have been covered up by the mainstream media. And we were able to give out uh, uh, a lot of money to the residents. Now, celebrities came into town as well. Um, and there were other charities that raised money. And the residents never saw it. It went to beautify the park. And I would say that you can't pay your rent with flowers. You can't eat park benches. And the residents uh, suffered. So she had just got done interviewing a couple of people that she had given checks to. And Ch she, Tammy. Yes. Okay. And she was depressed. I came in after work. It was about 6.30, 7 o'clock. She turned to me. She was cooking dinner, didn't even say hello. And she said, Rick, you need to run for Bill Johnson's seat. And Bill Johnson was the man, he, he was our rep, that, uh, our congressional rep that just vacated a seat to take a, a position at YSU. For the big bucks, really, so, really big bucks. Yes. Yeah. I am a non-politician, as a, but I am a, as of four months ago. But before that, I knew what I liked, I knew who I liked, and what I voted for, and what my core philosophies were. But I never thought of running. I stood there, and I thought for about 30 seconds, and I said, you know what, I will. And here's how, looking back, I, I, I describe it. If you've seen the movie Shawshank Redemption, yeah. Andy Dufresne is carving his initials in the wall, and a piece of failed concrete comes out of there. And here's a man imprisoned unjustly, and just at that moment, he sees some hope. And I selfishly saw some hope for myself because we're on a well, and we believe our wells are going to be contaminated in, in the future. Oh. And I saw some hope for the people of East Palestine. And um, I ran out the next day to the Board of Elections. I, that was a Thursday. Got all, everything I needed. So I went back to work Friday, Saturday, told my wife on Sunday morning, I'm going to go out and get signatures. I'll be back in a couple hours. I left at 10 in the morning. I came back at 8 at night and had uh, nearly half the signatures I need on that, needed on that Sunday. Oh, I was the first uh, Republican to file, and I'm going to win this. I'm a, a, a hardcore uh, America First Republican endorsed by Ted Nugent. But more importantly, I'm endorsed by the afflicted people of East Palestine, the people that were hurt. And I'm afflicted by, I, I'm also endorsed by the businesses that are shut down. Yeah, well, what's interesting is Donald Trump is not endorsing your opponents. I would have figured that, you know, they both talk about just, being strong Trump people. And maybe they are. I don't, I don't know. Look, I've got no ax to grind here. But it just struck me as odd that none of them so far have gotten Trump's endorsement. And boy, what, you know, what's Trump waiting for? So it, it, it raises Look, I, it raises I just, questions. I just had that conversation with my wife last night. Said, you know what? The funny thing is, they've endorsed in other congressional races yes. in Ohio. Yes. I believe they're hoping that I win, but I'm such a long shot because we're a grassroots competition. Uh, there's last I looked, I think Reggie was nearly. Uh, last I looked a few months ago, he was over three hundred thirty thousand in, uh, maybe up to a half a million already. In what would it be money? <clears throat> uh, in the campaign, yes. Spending money, okay, yes. Trying to buy the seat. Yes. Yeah, so we're very grassroots. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say I can't win, but I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to win, and because the people will want me. So um, I compare it to the uh, 1980s, the ragtag American hockey team that oh. didn't have a chance against the Russians. You yes. remember what they called that? Yes, the miracle well, on ice. Yeah, well, this is going to be the miracle on rice. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to win this. Ohio's going to be the better for it. That's, that is great. A little known fact, by the way, the 1960 Olympic ho USA Olympic hockey team pretty much did the same thing, but it wasn't on TV. I did not know that. Yes, 1960, okay. same thing, but, no, but it wasn't on TV, so it didn't exist. But no, it was a wonderful story. It really is. Just very quickly, uh, Kennywood um, Potato Patch. Yes. Tammy. Yes. Tam, my wife worked at Kennywood at the Potato Patch. So um, that was before I met her. I met her when we were both in college. I was in college. She was just a, a theater major as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked at a, uh, well, I worked the front desk as a summer job at that point at a place called Mannion's Gym. It's a very famous, it was in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. She came strolling in. She was the aerobics instructor. And uh, love at first sight. Honestly, it was. But, um, you know, I, I had tried At least to, on your part. Now, yeah. what about her? I mean, if she's here, I, I'm, I'm hoping, guessing, you yeah. know, maybe, maybe not. I I'm hoping know. it was mutual, but <laughs> I had I tried to play it cool, but, you know, we... I hear you. Yeah, I, we hit it off. I absolutely, 
Absolutely hear you. Live exclusive interview with Dr. Rick Chai. Um, when you go to vote, and there's, is there early voting still? There's still there's early, early voting. voting until uh, the 17th. All right. Uh, so 6th Congressional District, uh, Ohio. Uh, take a look at this guy. Listen to him here in Dimitri Live and Dangerously Local. I'm impressed with him. Um, and you, look, you decide. But uh, here he is, uh, no holds barred interviews and whatever you uh, decide. Uh, but, you know, here's the guy who's come back here to be in studio to reach out to the Upper Ohio Valley, uh, making a real commitment, which says a lot to me. Because my one of my first concerns was after who is this guy, is then, because you it seemed to me that you were a one-trick pony. By that I mean East Palestine. East Palestine, East Palestine. And, and it's a horrific story. I mean, there's no question, and God bless you for the work that you have done. No question. But I thought to myself, yeah, but is that it? Is that it? Because what's gonna, what are you going to do for the rest of us here in the Upper Ohio Valley? So I ask you that question now, Rick Chai. And that's a great question. And since you brought up the, uh, the election early voting, so there's an incident that happened. Someone came up to me, an older woman, at a Lincoln Day dinner just the other day. Everybody should know because the ballot's a little confusing. Bo all three candidates are on there twice. So... Uh, she said, what is this? I don't understand what, what, what I do here. And I said, well, the first time you vote is for uh, somebody has to take over in June until uh, January to take over the spot for Bill Johnson and is leaving. His remaining term. Right? Yes. The second time you vote, uh, you are voting for the person that is going to go against the Democrat for the primary in, in November, uh, win the primary to go against the Democrat in November. She didn't, she quite wasn't still getting, and I said, you know what, just forget it, just vote Rick Chai twice and you're good to go. <laughs> yes. So, as Which is being, true, which is actually <laughs> true, and that's legal in this case. Yeah. So I think to answer your question about uh, being a one-trick pony, I'm, uh, I believe I'm intelligent, I'm creative, I'm, I'm in, uh, in uh, Innovative. I, there's, I, no I, question, look, yes. there's no question about that. But what are you going to do for me? What am I going to do for you? I'm, so my core philosophies of how the country should be run is basically aligning with your listeners. I'm an America First Republican. Uh, what I want to do, my, some of my policies, number one, I want to open up the area to more drilling, uh, bring gas back. Uh, we've got over 400 years of uh, energy independence under our feet. However, after being in the... Uh, uh, catastrophe of East Palestine, I don't think people understand that drilling companies also, this is one of the few states that has something called a trade secret law, which does not uh, force drillers to reveal the chemicals that they're using. Really? In Ohio? Yes, yes in Ohio. So I want, just as a commercial might play for drugs and they list the side effects that you may have, yeah. then you make an informed decision whether you want to take that drug or not. Uh, we need the oil out of the ground because with gas prices, everything goes up. Goods go up, the price of... Uh, sure. So, but we shall also be informed on what is in our land going under our wells in case our wells are hit. Um, now, it's one thing to bring just gas here, but you have to understand when you bring that here, the gas industry, accessory industries come with it. And I want to entice then... Uh, industries from overseas, which is already starting to happen, it's actually going to be cheaper for them to manufacture their products here than to ship them over uh, on uh, vessels. And that's already a proven. We, we have some people that uh, uh, their uh, businesses were in uh, Ukraine and Turkey uh, that are already starting to come to Ohio, and I want to attract more businesses to do that. And I think that's the, the wave of the future once well, we, like you know, you once we're in energy independent. Yeah, what, what you need to do is hire Hunter Biden because he can get you Ukraine Absolutely. over here. Just like Absolutely. That. Did you by any chance see uh, Biden's uh, State of the Union uh, address? I caught some of it. I was speaking that night, and I, I watched some of it on uh, the phone as we were driving home. What did you think? Uh, disgusting. Why? D disgusting. Why? Um, it's it's all it, what he says is contradictory to what is happening in the country. What I caught of it, um, he's taking credit for closing the border, and it, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, I heard you speaking earlier about him mispronouncing the name and then uh, uh, apologizing Lake for and, Lake and Riley. Yes, Lake and, yeah. but what is worse, uh, apologizing for using the word illegal. I use the word illegal, and I'm not apologizing for it. Illegal alien. Uh, that's what they are, and that's what Democrats called them ten years ago. You know, it's taking a generation for them to infiltrate our young people to brainwash them into believing they what they believe in because they start in the schools. Mm -hmm. And that is the real problem because uh, people in their, 
you know, teenagers into their 20s, they're starting to believe, believe this stuff, and we have to change that. I think the pendulum's swinging back the other way. Well, I hope so. What they've done to our law schools and to Ivy League schools that now have turned into jokes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're woke. Oh, Harvard absolutely. is a woke joke. Harvard, mm -hmm. can you... If they can do that to Harvard, can you imagine what they have already done to our public schools and everything else? I mean, it's scary stuff. Live exclusive interview here with uh, Rick Chai, Dr. Rick Chai. He is the Republican, one of the Republican candidates for the 6th Congressional District Ohio Republican primary. Uh, full disclosure, he's also an advertiser here. I happen to like the guy. And I would have the other two on as well if they wanted to come back to the Upper Ohio Valley, which they don't. They just think, well, we'll just, you know, pay some money, run some TV ads, and, you know, we're... You know, where that's all it takes to wrap up the uh, Upper Ohio Valley. They don't know. They don't know the people here very well. I don't think they know the people here very well at all. I really don't. But Rick Chai is here. He is back here in studio, and he wants your vote. We'll be talking with him more about some other issues to see if he is aligned with you. So stay tuned for that. Dimitri live and dangerously local. Download the River Network app and then click River Talk. Dimitri live and dangerously local here in studio. Live exclusive interview with Dr. Rick Chai. Chai is in T as in T party. And he is running for the Republican nomination, uh, 6th Congressional District, Ohio. And um, really an uh, interesting guy. Very interesting guy. Chiropractor. Um, uh, made his bones, if you will, in East Palestine, doing an awful lot of work for the people there. And you continue to do work for them as well there, too, right? I do. I work three and a half days a week now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what do you make of this um, latest news? It seems like latest news, uh, that they did not have to blow up that uh, Norfolk Southern tanker. So that's just a summary of the NTSB hearings that were done probably seven, eight months ago. It's nothing new to us in East Palestine. Without getting too complicated, those tankers were much hotter the day before uh, than when they blew them up the day after. Uh, I believe they were around 127 degrees, and the other ones were six in, the, in the 60s. They were not going to blow. And per the uh, company that, that makes the chemical, the uh, polyvinyl chloride, uh, the, um, the, P, the PVC, that's actually the, the polymer, uh, the vinyl chloride is a monomer, which was in that train. They said there was it, it could have heated up to 500 degrees and it wouldn't have blown. Uh, we all believe that uh, that was just a uh, to get the trains off the tracks as quickly as possible. Uh, it would have took, taken five to six days and probably longer to drain those uh, tankers and uh, do it the proper way. And we had the, Norfolk Southern had trains lined up for for miles. So I believe the people of East Palestine were collateral damage. And again, you can reach me at, uh, you can see my web uh, page at rickchai.com, R-I-C-K-T-S-A-I.com, and my Facebook page, Dr. Rick Chai for Congress. And uh, so, d you know, talking about the train derailment, one thing that has really angered me is all the politicians that have used this as, I call it cheap bling or jewelry to wear around their neck so they come in for photo ops. You know, I do run a clean campaign, but I did mention, mention last time Something that really angered me was that uh, my two opponents came into town uh, for photo ops. They've never done anything for uh, us in the train to room. And even worse than that, uh, when residents called them both, they never got an answer back, any answers back from both of them. Uh, so I believe that, you know, when, I'm in, when I win, and I hope uh, we all win in Ohio, that... I will never take credit for something, or I'll never come to your town and get photo ops without having first tried to help you. Well, didn't and I also you had mentioned something about <clears throat> Ruley's person last time you were here who actually did raise money, but there was something weird, so some the, strange thing. What yes, was that? so there was uh, just serendipitously the day before one of the um, the meet and greets or debates, I attended a police dinner. At that police dinner, the the police were kind of angry because they were saying, "Do you know that that?" charity, the $100,000, $130,000 charity uh, that the person skipped town with, that was Michael Ruley's legislative advisor, the, his friend, the man that worked right next to with him, by him in his office. His name is, his name is Mike Peppel. So 
I met Michael Rooley many times during these uh, debates. I, I think he's a good man. I don't believe he knew about it, but what's he the, done about it? The, the, that's, see, that's the question. The DA believes that man should be in jail, and he's walking free. The police believe. The police told me they believe strings were pulled. That's their words. I don't know. Um, you know, so I don't know why that man is not is not being um, held accountable for. Uh, so the prosecutor the is not going to bring the district attorney or prosecutor is not going to bring charges? At this point, he's walking free. You had something very interesting. You brought up a very interesting point during our uh, commercial break here, and that was you've got these two guys spending a, a lot of money on TV, uh, Stoll's Foods and Ruley. By the way, Ruley's ads, and I, I actually spoke to him about this. I said, it looks like you're running for grocer of the year. These are grocery store ads. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, it's, just, it's just weird. I just didn't understand that at all. Now, he may win. You may win. What the hell do I know? But it was just really weird. They look like grocery store ads. I just don't understand that. In any event, um, you brought up an interesting point that neither one of the uh, other two have released any polling data indicating how that they're doing, which if they're not releasing polling data, either one of them, Neither one of them can be doing all that well. Yeah, I'll make this short. A few weeks ago, I had a patient in my office, and they said, hey, look, you're on my phone. Mm -hmm. And it, it said, do you, do you like Donald Trump? Do you know Dr. Rick Chai? Do you know Reggie Stolzfuss? Do you know uh, Michael Rooley? And I said, hey, that's pretty cool because they're doing a poll on me, and whether they're doing a poll on me or not, my name is in everybody's hand. Sure. And that was about three weeks ago, maybe even a little more, and I'm waiting for the results of that poll, and it's never come out. So my theory is uh, I think I'm going to shock the country. I think I'm going to shock Ohio because here's a grassroots uh, politician that I believe I'm going to win. I think they're uh, a little surprised at the results. You I think it would have been all over social media. I think it would have been everywhere uh, if uh, that if uh, I was getting beat that badly. Or either one of those two are winning. Yes. I mean, but th that's really interesting. But that's neither just my camp. theory. Yeah, neither camp. You also had uh, been involved in a debate at some kind of function at uh, Reggie's, uh, Reggie's backyard. Tell us about that. Uh, we had a, uh, a meet and greet slash debate. They all turned into kind of debates mm -hmm. uh, just uh, the other night. And so it was one of the weird ones. We, we, we never had this happen at the end. In his hometown, they did a straw poll. And that mm -hmm. means at the very end, you say, okay, you sign on paper who you would vote for. Well, that's his backyard, though. It's in his backyard. Yes. Um, so, of course, Reggie won that. Um, and Michael Rooley got uh, 14 votes, and I got 13. So these are people wow. that know nothing of us. And um, I thought it was interesting also that um, he was only able to draw about 51 people in his town. So every time I go to speak, I get nervous, not because um, I'm afraid to speak in front of people. I actually enjoy it. I, mean, I believe I'm a good communicator. Oh, yeah. But um, I think, yeah, five people are going to show up. Nobody knows me. Do you know every time I speak, there's, there's not an empty chair. People have to stand. So I think people are going to be very shocked. I believe that people are fed up with government today. Yep. The other thing is, you know, I'm not endorsed by any politicians. Again, I, I mentioned I was endorsed by Ted Nugent and the people of East Palestine. But, you know, as a, in the sh my short career as a politician, I've seen that I myself am getting a little tired of politicians trading off endorsements. It doesn't mean a lot to me. Now, that, I, would love, that, I would love an endorsement from what? Donald Trump, yeah. but... What does it mean? He, he has endorsed anyone, which is really interesting because they're both saying, oh, we're Trump, all three of you actually are saying, oh, we're you know, pro-Trump, this, that, and that. But he hasn't endorsed anyone, which yeah. I think is a, is a red flag for something. I don't know what, but for something. So I believe I can win on my own merits. And mm -hmm. uh, I think people also vote on who you are and, and your strengths and your philosophy and, and your personality. And I by far believe I win the debates. But I think um, that... I don't, you know, when you say we're all pro-Trump and they talk about Trump, I might mention Trump once every other d debate, uh, but my opponents jump up and down and they say Trump 50 times. Uh, I don't pander to anybody. I believe... Uh, well, maybe you should. Wouldn't that help to get more votes? Uh, so when you talk about... Uh, I think people know what I stand for. And you don't get endorsed by Ted Nugent by, uh, <laughs> by, by being a non-conservative. Definitely. Yeah. But... Um, I, I had a theory that possibly it's the fact that I'm so grassroots, you know, they've, uh, that they haven't endorsed anybody in this race. Maybe they're hoping I win, but they're not sure if they want to put their name on me yet.
because they have endorsed in the 13th district, uh, they have endorsed somebody, a, congress a person running for the same type of thing that we are. And nobody's been endorsed in this race by Donald Trump at this point. My goodness gracious. So um, first day in office, let's say you win the primary, let's say you win the general. If you win the primary, you're gonna win the general. What's the first thing you're gonna do as Congressman Dr. Rick Chai? Well, first thing, I will live up to my promises. Number one, I will sign the Railway Safety Act. The second thing, I'm going to introduce a bill, whether it's in your town, whether it's a chemical disaster, whether it's a plant disaster, that just like no-fault insurance in uh, the medical industry, that the government is going to come, if your home is uh, contaminated or infl afflicted, uh, we are going to buy your home out, and then we're going to go after the company that uh, and hold them liable, and they're going to pay the government back. Uh, secondly, I'm going to push for drilling in Ohio. Uh, I'm also going to fight to close the border. There is not a week that goes by. I just had another woman uh, lose a grandson to fentanyl poisoning. Mm. Uh, I will, the, the, not only the, the first day, within the first week, I'm going to make uh, reservations to go visit the border myself. Uh, I want to see what's happening down there. We know what's happening, uh, and I'm going to close, uh, do everything I can to help close that border. It's taking jobs. It is taking uh, lives, uh, and um, it's uh, that. Those are the f first couple things I would do. What about uh, jobs? What are you gonna do for jobs here in the sixth congressional district, Ohio? Well, as we discussed, uh, we t we talked about President Biden. Uh, he has the option of. Uh, uh, stopping the uh, the International Trade Commission ruling about ten. You know, yes, um, I would do everything in my power to try to uh, persuade. Uh, and and how do you per persuade him to uh, overturn that? And how do you persuade give people? Give him an ice cream cone. Yeah, give him an ice cream cone. Uh, just the the same way that uh, you you use your, the power of your voice as well. Uh, everybody had noticed Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's one of the ones that's yeah. uh, willing to speak up. That's what my, my problem had been with the mayor of East Palestine. He said, well, I don't really have any power. Yes, you do have power. You have the power of your voice. And um, I didn't have any power as a resident, uh, but they, I'm credited with the EPA expanding their map of contamination in East Palestine. I will get things done when I get to Washington, and uh, I'll, to bring jobs back, I'm going to push for a more entice uh, drilling in this area. What are you going to do to rein in the EPA? To rein in the EPA, I'm, so first of all, uh, not only the EPA, but I, I wanted to talk about the CDC real quick. Sure. Because we talked so much about the EPA last time. Sure. Imagine this. In the country's worst chemical disaster from a train derailment, the EPA set guidelines that discouraged medical doctors from testing the patients for, of East Palestine for the chemicals on the train. They didn't want them tested. What? Yes. So... I defied the CDC and tested the residents, and they came up with high levels of the chemicals uh, in, uh, that were on the train in their body, benzene and vinyl chloride. Uh, two of these patients, one of the patients, the entire family became sick, and they all tested positive for those chemicals. Uh, the father just uh, had a double mastectomy for a rare form of male breast cancer, and uh, he's currently undergoing chemo treatments. One of the women uh, that I've known for uh, probably over 30 years she also uh, got very sick from breathing in the vinyl chloride fumes, uh, vomited for days, was very sick, and she just also had another uh, double mastectomy for the, breast cancer. The CDC and did not want you to test for this stuff? Ab absolutely not, yes. Why, and not? Why not? That's a good question. That is a good question. So in any disaster like that, even if you would say, hey, these people are being silly, but we have millions of dollars, let's test them, let's see, see if anything's coming positive. And then when they come negative, you, you reassure them, and then you say, okay, see, everything was fine, but that wasn't the case. Many people were coming up positive for benzene and vinyl chloride metabolites. And the vinyl chloride metabolites, the CDC would say, oh, let me, before I forget, here is the most egregious thing. They did not release the fact that when CDC workers came into town, uh, many of them got ill. And when they would leave, the CDC said, well, a whistleblower, uh, let that be known. And when the CDC admitted that later, they said, well, we didn't report it because when they left at the after the day was over to their hotel 30 miles away, they started to feel better. Then when they would come into town, they would get sick again. So it was transient. And that is our exact point. It is a corrupt, and when their head doctor came down and had to speak, uh, 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 to speak at the, our church, 
CDC's so the head CDC's head doctor came down, um, an, an Asian man. I cannot remember his name. Because all uh, Asians look alike to you. Yes, right, they Chai. do. Yeah. yeah, and they all have the same <laughs> uh, sounding names, right? The weird names. But, um, yeah, he said, yes. uh, you know, I'm sorry that you've tested positive. We cannot remove the chemicals from your body, but we can treat the cancers. That is the CDC talking to the residents of East Palestine. So I will fight like hell when I get to Washington. I will use my voice. I will use what power a congressman has. And I'll fight for Ohio as well. Uh, I will not be somebody that doesn't do anything for your town and come for photo ops. What, what people don't know, when I've been traveling through here, uh, when I went down to uh, Washington County, I met with uh, county commissioners, okay? But they probably don't know that I went to residents that were affected by the brine. You know, in Ohio, we, most of our water that goes into injection wells here comes from New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Uh, so there's fracking water that's coming into Ohio that we're making money on that is being put into our ground. Uh, so that has uh, got into, uh, there's a lot of people in the southern part of Ohio that they heat their homes with their oil wells. They can't do that anymore because the brine water has gotten to their oil wells and it makes their uh, wells useless. Wow. These are wells that have been used in their families for generations. And um, when you, uh, the water pressure is so high now because they've, imbe they've been infected with brine, when they take the cap off, the water just flies out as if it were like an oil, an oil a well gusher. just spout, a gusher, yeah. yes. Wow. Yeah, so I, when I come into your town, if something happens or you're in need, yes, I'll talk to the local politicians, but I'm going to talk to the residents as well. Dr. Rick Chai is his name. It is spelled T-S-A-I, but it's pronounced Chai as in the T as in Tea Party. He is the Republican candidate, one of the Republican candidates for the 6th Congressional District of Ohio in the primary. And uh, this guy uh, loves being in the Upper Ohio Valley, loves coming into the studio, talking uh, with us. Uh, the other two, uh, we had uh, one of them come in once, and that was it, and uh, not gotten any else from him. And the other one's never come in. Uh, had him on the phone, and uh, but this guy... This guy is telling me he wants your vote, Upper Ohio Valley, and he is talking the talk, and he is here, which means he's also walking the walk. Okay, we're coming back. There we go. Yeah, when I turn on the mic, uh, Rick, you can't be uh, talking. You can't be doing that here. Uh, we got top quality broadcast standards here. Dimitri, live and dangerously local, live exclusive interview with the guy who might, might end up being your next congressman, 6th Congressional District, Ohio, the southeast part of Ohio, uh, Ron Johnson's, or uh, Bill Johnson, excuse me, Bill Johnson's uh, uh, old district. Uh, his name is Dr. Rick Chai, Chai like the T as in Tea Party. He is one of the three candidates running for the Republican nomination, and he has made a statement, in fact, repeatedly, that he wants the votes of everybody here in the Upper Ohio Valley, and he has been here uh, doing just that. And so I want you to spend uh, some time thinking about this guy, listening to this guy. Uh, he is a certainly a doer. There's no question about this. Proactive is uh, stamped on his forehead. There's no question about that. Dr. Rick Chai our very special guest. Uh, full disclosure, he is also an advertiser. Others are advertising as well. There's, again, no conflict of interest, but you need full disclosure here, full transparency. You do whatever you want. Dr. Rick Chai, let's talk about um, the water issue. Uh, you told me this during the break, and I don't know why you're not bragging about this. Uh, you gave away a ton of water to the people in East Palestine uh, out of your own pocket. Well, let's talk about that. First of all, not out of my own pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, when, I, when I'm on a mission, I'm like the Terminator. I don't stop. I saw a need for water. We supplied the entire uh, town of East Palestine with water uh, through the entire derailment. I shut that down when I started to run because I didn't want a conflict of interest. Where did uh, you get the money for the water then? If it's not so the money came from all over the country. And what, oh. what would happen was, uh, and it, if I see something that needs, needs done, I'll, I'll get it done. Mm -hmm. So what, what would happen was people were sending boxes from Amazon, which w w might cost them $30 to send a small box. And then some people would send pallets of water from Home Depot or Amazon, oh, which would cost you know, $700 to $1,000 when, yeah. when water from Sam's could cost one ninety nine. 
So we started raising money and I would go get the actual water myself on days off or even days that I worked. I have a big trailer and there's videos of me just throwing and not for any fame or glory. And I never thought of running for politics, but I would go get that water myself because it broke my heart to see somebody spending $700 on a pallet of water when they cost $199. So, and I also started the Facebook group, East Palestine Off the Rails for better communication. There are thousands of people on that Facebook group now. It's about getting, you know, in, in the war, uh, in, uh, with uh, World War II, they asked, hey, what was your biggest, the most important weapon you had? And it was the radio so that people could communicate. Um, so it, there was a lack of communication in East Palestine, and I brought that to, uh, I, I brought that to fruition. How so much the people, water did you give out? I, Shamu tank full, I have no idea. I, I have no idea. Jeez. Enough. So, wow. and, and people are disappointed that it stopped because nobody's currently doing that. All right. Now, one big issue in the Republican Party between the interventionists and the non-interventionists is Ukraine and to a lesser extent uh, Israel and Taiwan. Where do you stand on those? So, you, okay, so there are two ways to, to make people do what you want to do or other countries. And it, Financially is number one, okay? But, so you either give, 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 which we've been doing too much, and but you can give, and if you have holes in the bucket, that water's just, you can fill up a, a water, a bucket with water, but you have to keep filling up if water keeps coming out of the holes in the bucket. You gotta plug those holes, and those, pl those plugs would be other countries. Uh, be number one, sanctions, tougher sanctions. And secondly, it would be- sorry, slow down, Wait, sanctions on Ukraine? No, 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 no. Sanctions on Russia, okay? So, uh, first of all, they're still selling oil, all right? got to stop other countries from buying their oil. Mm -hmm. And that was a mistake anyway. Trump had, had, Trump had done very well with that. But then um, uh, I, I believe it was Biden that opened that back up. Uh, so um, we have to be tough on other countries, and other countries have to do their fair share. Do you know in Palestine and uh, 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 Israel that we funded them about equally? I don't know if you're really. You're, oh, absolutely. So we we believe we're saying that we the Palestine is not using the money that we're giving them for war, but we know that everybody knows that Hamas they are. is doing it. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we can't fund both sides. Uh, so we need to curtail our spending for Ukraine. Although we don't need to stop 100 percent, but these other countries need to step up, and we have to put uh, tougher sanctions on the countries that are still de still dealing with Russia. Mm -hmm. And Hamas and uh, Israel, what do you what do you do there? So you know that boils down to one thing. I have never heard a more uh, intelligent uh, description. One side wants to kill the other. Palestine had five chances at peace, and they turned it down every yep. time. Yep. I'm just going to put it this way: if uh, Palestine, or if Israel dropped their weapons, uh, if Palestine dropped their weapons tomorrow, there would be peace between the two. Right. No longer a threat to Israel. Yes. Yeah. If Israel dropped their weapons tomorrow, there would be mass genocide. Yep. So from that's my stance. The, from the river to the sea, they brag about it. Yes, that is my stance. That is a scary thing. That's my stance. Okay, great. So um, what else would you do, uh, let's say, the transgender movement is just the craziest damn thing. I don't understand any of this. You are a chiropractor, Dr. Rick Chai. Chai is in the T, is in Tea Party, running for the Republican nomination for Congress, 6th Congressional District, Ohio. Um, as a doctor, doctor of chiropractic, how do you feel about this transgender movement and about the mutilation and sterilization of little kids who think they might be a different gender? I love everyone. I don't care what you identify as, but there are only two genders. And doctors that t uh, tell people that there are more than two genders, they're either crazy or they, they're pushing an agenda. Um, the problem is it have to, has to be kept out of our schools because once you start influencing children when they're young, uh, they, they're most in, uh, influential uh, th to be impressed under the age of seven. And that, that's when they're forming their beliefs. And if you start getting kids uh, influence in that direction, uh, they're going to keep that type, and it's, it, uh, philosophy is going to grow and grow and grow. Uh, we have to stop it in the schools. And the problem with that, I, I don't know if I mentioned this on your show, but I think if, if you lean that way and you're a teacher, you're afraid to tell other adults but you go into a room full of kids and say, how can I get my validation? Let me tell these children, they're going to make me feel better about myself because they're validating my right, beliefs, right? Right, right. So, they want to please teacher. 
Yes, yeah. yes. So, but the teacher also feeds off that because it makes it feel better about themselves. I don't care what you identify with uh, as, uh, it's going to be kept out of our schools. Uh, there's going to be no men in women's sports. And I believe I talked about the bodybuilding, how people mess themselves up on drugs. Uh, no Cheater. hormones for they, children they under cheat. 18. Yeah. And so uh, what after 18, I don't care what you do. But I also don't believe we should have to pay for it. I don't believe the taxpayers have to pay for that. Uh, I believe that if you want that done, you save up your money and you go ahead and do it. Indeed. Well, Dr. Rick Chai, uh, Chai is in tea, is in tea party. I uh, appreciate you coming back here to the Upper Ohio Valley yet again. Thank you. Um, and uh, he wants uh, everybody's vote here in the Upper Ohio Valley. He's uh, making a statement, a very big statement, not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. And you, dear listener, needed to hear this. You need to know this. And you're asking them to vote for you twice, actually. Yes. Right? Okay. And because that's just the weird way the ballot is is set up and chai is spelled t-s-a-i and uh, i want to thank you again for your time i always give my guests the last word to speak directly to my listeners so while you're talking you got about a minute minute okay. and a half to say pretty much anything that you want and remember to tell them how to get in touch with you how to get your signs how to get your uh, bumper stickers how to do uh, donate or whatever um, as you do that, I'm going to do some stuff on my phone so you don't even have to look at me. You just talk directly to my listeners. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who might be your next congressman, 6th Congressional District, Dr. Rick Chai. My microphone is yours. So, voters of D6, uh, I built one of the largest chiropractic offices in the nation. I know how to run a business. I know how to communicate. Uh, I can make friends, but I'm not going to Washington to make friends. I'm going there to do a job and get things done. Uh, I faced some of the largest uh, entities, the EPA, the CDC, the railroad, the federal government, and I did not back down. I fought for the people of my town hard. And um, I will fight for you. Whatever is going on in your county or your town, I will come listen to you. And I won't just come listen to the local politicians. I will come listen to the residents. I love road trips. I will come listen. So I don't need money, and I don't need friends. My wife, I know it's cliche, but she is my best friend. Uh, my idea of a good night is sitting with my wife and the dogs watching television. Uh, I don't need money. I probably could have retired five years ago, but I like what I do. I never thought I was going to be a politician. And I, can, I believe that some of the best politicians in the future now are going to be the ones that are fed up and they're residents or they're just citizens that are not career politicians. We need to get these politicians out of there that are embedded like Alabama ticks. Lastly, let me say uh, that uh, if these two are so great at what they do as they claim, then you are doing them no disservice by leaving them where they are so that they continue doing that great job where they are. And you have a chance, one chance, I'm not cocky about this, but you've got one chance to, to elect an outsider that's going to fight for you. And I care about the people, and I will come listen to you. You can uh, see my campaign page at rickchai.com, R-I-C-K-T-S-A-I.com, and Dr. Rick Chai for Congress on Facebook. Let's win this, Ohio. Let's fix spineless D.C. And uh, anything else you want to add about how to get in touch with you or make donations to your campaign? Uh, we're grassroots. Uh, we, we thrive on the $10, $15, $25, $50 uh, donations. Just go to rickchai.com, R-I-C-K-T-S-A-I.com. Uh, we'd love to do some more radio ads and uh, uh, Facebook ads in this last week and a half here. Let's pull out a win, people. Let's win this for Ohio and the nation and God. Uh, Dr. Rick Chai, thank you so much for joining us. You're going to be in the Upper Ohio Valley again. It's like you're living here these days. Yes, okay. yes. So you'll be seeing him uh, all around. You've got a big truck or something with flags and uh, yes. this, that, and bells. Yes, and whistles. tens of thousands of people have seen it. Okay, and uh, many of them beat their horns. Going, uh, hey, Dr. Fist Rick, bump. I heard John Dimitri and all mm -hmm. this. And a lot of people say they heard John Dimitri. Yeah, I actually have your face stickered on my uh, truck now. Only on one side? Two sides, well, we'll both sides. Dr. Rick Chai, good night. Right. Thank you so Thank much. You so I much wish for you well. Me. Thank you again. I wish you well, sir. You can wrap up here, and I've just got about a minute or so right. left with I'll you. I'll see you after the win. Indeed. Thank you. I wish you well. 